Hello, Arrow. Hello, and good morning. How are you doing, Travel? I'm doing all right. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to talk with you because you're an open door. You're, you're, you're opening up the eyes of those that are in question. You're opening up the hearts of those that don't know. And, and for you to put this book out here for us to hold on to with, our, with both hands, this is an amazing journey that is coming true. I'm so excited for it to be out in the world and folks to be able to, you know, wrestle with some of the things that we have in there. The, the wrestling part, it, why after all these years is there still so much wrestling? What, what is the journey? Because I want to understand it, Travel. Yeah, you know, I think, well, first and foremost, I'd like to say that we as trans people have always existed in every culture and every community since the beginning of time. Now, we did not have the language back in the day that we have today right. to be able to describe those folks, but we've always been there. And then when it comes to our film and TV history, we've also always been there. You perhaps just did not know, yep. right? And so how can we begin to have a conversation about how the things we see on screen impact us in our everyday lives, and, and that's something that I try to do with the book, is like humanize and personalize some of these stories, some of these films and shows that you might have seen, so that you think differently, right? And hopefully that gets us to a place where we can truly say, you know, we have inclusion, or that we have, you know, everyone accurately represented on screen. Travel, were you part of the actual design of this book cover? Because it really does serve as a ticket. It's a ticket for you to say, well, what's in this? And then when you open it it's like oh my god this is unbelievable yes, yes we it, there was a very long journey to this cover <laughs> lots of conversations <laughs> but i really wanted something that hyper focused on on the vastness of the history right and the complexities therein right so yes it's a book about trans representation but i'm talking about drag i'm talking about you know I, I'm a big lover of Tyler Perry as Medea. Mm -hmm. And so I talk a little bit about how black men in particular in my life, dressing up as women characters, influences and impacts, right, the everyday lives of black trans women in films so that we as a community can talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to cover to kind of give you glimpses of, oh, this person or this type of conversation might be talked about in this film um, or in this book um, so that it serves as kind of of, you know, and a moose bouche and appetizer, if you will, uh, for you to, you know, snack on and then go do some of your own research to carry it on further beyond the book. Yeah. You talk about being a comedian. You know, when, when you're on that stage, you are the one that's holding on to the freedom of speech. When you write a book, you've got to deal with editors. Ooh, was that a challenge? Because, I mean, you know how they are. They can say, ah, Travel, you don't need to go there. Yes. You know, I am grateful to say I had very supportive editors who understood the motivation and the intention behind the work that I was trying to do. Um, and so they allowed my voice to stay central. Still had great feedback about different bits and pieces of information that maybe I need to explain further. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely pushed back. I, I'm one of those writers. I, I love pushing back on an editor because um, I really wanted to make sure that like the vision was, was maintained. But the entire team was really supportive and I think understood the importance of a book like this. Mm -hmm. We, it, we, it tells so much history. It shares so much of the journey of so many. And, and you're right. A lot of us don't understand uh, that what, what took place. But we've got to be in the present place of now going, oh, my God, it seems like the lawmakers and people today are trying to rid the world of, of, of drag and things like this. It's like, stop, stop. It's an expression. It is a way of life. It is, it is, mm -hmm. it is a journey. And, and, you know, how do you feel on your side when this continuously seems like an attack? Yeah, well, I mean, it is an attack, right? It is, it is a campaign against trans people, against what we, what we represent. You know, it's really interesting, right, to, to come up with a book, to have it coming out at a moment in which yes. book bans are happening across the country. They don't want you talking about certain aspects of black history, right, in certain parts of the country. Um, so it's really kind of intimidating in a lot of ways to do this work. But the thing that keeps me going is knowing that they can't erase us, 
You can pass whatever laws you want, <laughs> but we as trans people, you know, we'll still be here. We're not going anywhere, um, and we will care for each other and, and build our communities and support that we need. Um, and knowing this history, right, is part of that journey. It's part of that pushback um, because, you know, what's the saying? You, you, you can't know where you're going unless you know where you come yep, from. Yep. Um, it's that exact same thing. It is a community, and it's a blessed community, and it's a t- togetherness community, and, and, and people just don't realize it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do you feel like you're the activator? In other words, when, when you release a book like oh. this, I mean, it's, it's like suddenly you've, you've taken experience and you've taken knowledge and you've now become the activator in other people's hearts. You know, maybe. You know, I, I do a lot of work in journalism yeah. around, you know, access and support for black journalists, for trans journalists. And so I have, you know, I have some, a, a generation of younger journalists that I think have articulated, you know, some sort of representation that, that I help serve for them in the same way that a journalist like Monica Roberts, a uh, uh, legendary black trans journalist, um, was for me. Um, but really, I see myself as like, you know, like some WD-40, right? Like the work is happening. <laughs> I'm just like oiling the gears, you know, hopefully that, it, you know, works a little easier, a little smoother, you know. <laughs> what What do you do in those situations when you've got younger journalists with you on your team? Because as as a broadcast instructor, they, they think they're stars already. How do you, you know, kind of level them out to let them, you know, have their own voice, but you're not a star yet? I tell people that it's a journey. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of folks, they, they look at folks like myself, they look at other, um, you know, relatively young journalists who have, you know, established themselves in a particular way, and they want that. Um, but I, I have to remind people that, you know, it took me a decade or so to get to this point, not only in terms of my career, but also in terms of just the knowing of myself, so that when I go into a newsroom these days, I'm able to not only know that I belong there and know that I bring something. Something, mm-hmm. but also that I can still learn things as well yep. from the folks who are around me. Um, I, I think that 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 goal of always remaining teachable is something that I try to to spread, you know, a variety of different ways when I'm talking to younger journalists, um, but also as I'm talking about this book, right? Like, we should all remain teachable. There's always something for us to learn, um, and there's always ways that we can be, you know, in solidarity with other communities um, as they're they're searching for and looking for the representation they deserve as well. Yeah, this book, We, we See Each Other, is definitely a book of teaching, and the thing that I, I always, as a writer, myself i always think about that reader 10 years from now or 15 years from now they're going to find this book and they're going to go oh my god they took a chance in in bringing things forward yeah and and that's that's one of the motivations right so the book is not comprehensive i don't cover every single right. moment of trans visibility um i just kind of hit on the ones that that were impactful for me but the goal is that somebody in 10 years and 15 years and 20 years not only that they will be inspired to you know perhaps tell their own story and document other parts of this history but they will have an accurate understanding of our thoughts in this particular moment moment of intense, you know, trans visibility and backlash against trans uh, communities, um, I want everything to be nuanced and complex, right? Because for me, I feel like when I was doing this book, when I was diving into the archive, Mm -hmm. I got very one-sided, one-dimensional stories of what life was like for trans people at very particular particular times in history. Um, And our lives are so much more than our trauma and our tragedies, right? Um, And so hopefully with this book, folks get a little bit of the other side of what trans life can also be. Would you say that Laverne was one of your greatest inspirations? Because, I mean, you were in grad school, and and it was just an Mm -hmm. opportunity to grow from, from that relationship. Absolutely. Like Laverne is, is I dedicate a whole chapter on Laverne in the book for that particular reason. You know, 2014 was her role in Orange is the New Black. Um, I feel confident was the first time that many people had seen a black trans woman, you know, on screen in a narrative that wasn't problematic, right? That wasn't about her trauma. Um, And she has since gone on to continue representing the community and also educating the world, right? About 
about her life, about the existences and experiences of trans people. So she was pivotal for me in, in my own personal development. And then being able to, you know, interview her over the years has always been um, just kind of a great source of, of pride for me. In this day of binge watching, I love that you put viewing guides in here because it makes me want to go to a Netflix or a Hulu and search and, and have a better feeling and meaning of each episode. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing, right? I, I want people to see what I have seen. Yeah. So I talk about the things in the different chapters. And then there are viewing guides so that you can go watch this web series or watch this show. Um, and these are the movies, the shows that I talk about in the book, but not all of them are also talked about in the book. So it's a, there's a sort of exploration and discovery that can happen as well. I'm just so proud of you, Travell, because, I mean, you're going to open up the door and allow people to step free of their of their silence because i mean they they can go out and act they can go out and be creative people and i'm just so proud of you for putting this out there thank you so much for having me arrow you be brilliant today okay absolutely i'm gonna do that anyway but thank (laughs) you for the encouragement bye